Welcome to the Sisterhood Presents, the Seasons of Downton Abbey. And I'm Kathy Snyder. And I'm Marilyn Schmidt. And we're both members of La Delta Circle of the Garden Club of St. Augustine. We have been doing sisterhood programs for about 15, 16 years. Yes. And we picked up Downton Abbey, of course, several years ago when it became so very popular. And it gave us such inspiration to use flowers in an interesting way, not with the Downton budget, but with our budget. So we hope that we've got some good ideas for you to use in different seasons and effects you can get with plants that are not so uh, hybridized, not just from a, a florist, maybe things you grow in your own yard. And then you can use some beautiful flowers with that. So hopefully we've got ideas to share with you and we'll have some fun. Yes, yes we always have fun. Yes, that's the most important <laughs> Don't part. do it if it isn't. So stay <laughs> tuned for some interesting ideas for fall, winter, spring, and summer. Our first presentation we're going to talk about fall but the inspiration for all the programming is this lovely book called the seasons at high clare and high clare castle of course is the real down Abbey, and it's a very interesting book you should check it out from your library because it tells you about all the efforts that the carnivan family has made to keep high clare castle looking as beautiful as it is and in order to do that they have broken down the uh, estate into farms and, and areas for growing things and raising cattle. And then also, if we were just lucky enough, we could tour High Clare if we went to England. So uh, we got great ideas from this book. It shows you that uh, England has definite seasons just like most of the United States. And the flowers and the the decorations reflect the change of those seasons. So we'll start with fall. We have a pumpkin. This is an heirloom pumpkin. And we've started with some, some pieces that we're going to use. And we think of this more as a downstairs uh, arrangement where uh, the cooks are and where all the valets and footmen are because it would be more, more informal. And it's a great idea for you to use something real, like a pumpkin. Uh, and we have uh, prepped it. I'm gonna let Marilyn mm -hmm. explain, explain how that happens. Well, we just cut around the top uh, in a good circle and scoop it out, make sure it's really clean inside. And then uh, we put a container in there, like a, a plastic or glass uh, square or round inside. And then um, we use this, which is called Oasis. We are trying to wean ourselves from this <laughs> and use something that looks like chicken wire and can be scratchy, but uh, we're, we're slowly getting into that. But inside this, we have Oasis. If you buy this, if you're a novice, this is the wet kind because you're using live matter. So you do need to plug that into uh, something that's wet so that it can pull up and drink water. So that's what's in there if you're just beginning. And then uh, we just start with what, however we feel at the moment. This is definitely um, seat of your pants flower arranging. So uh, usually we color it. So why don't we maybe look at doing that right now? We have some. Do you want to use a holly ivy? Or? I like that. Sounds okay. good. While she's doing that, while she's pulling those things, I'll explain what's already in here. We have a croton. This is called Picasso's paintbrush, and it has a wonderful curly Leaf finger like type type design. Mm -hmm. And this this is more of a standard croton, which you see in such beautiful colors, oranges and reds and greens. Then we have cut down uh, a palmetto frond and and we've layered this with a beautiful sunflower in the front and then the palmetto behind it and then the croton leaves behind that. So it gives some depth to the arrangement. 
Now, Marilyn is tucking in some holly fern, which is one of the hardier ferns, and it's great to use it at this time of the year because it will last. Yes. And so many ferns are very lovely, but they're kind of delicate. And the holly fern is not. It's kind of like the marriage between a holly and a fern. And uh, it's just a wonderful, shiny green uh, foliage. Uh, and unlike holly, it doesn't have any stickers, which is really makes it a lot more fun to work Helpful. with. Yes. So what we're, we're trying to do is to make it taller, the pumpkin. Maybe we should explain what that is. Yeah, well, that is the palmetto yeah. wand. So that, I'll that show should, them. We'll um, show the original. This is what we started with. Mm -hmm. yeah. A Florida staple. <laughs> and we'll be here for a long time, mm -hmm. too. Uh, all I did was take scissors and cut around it and get that part right there and mm -hmm. shape it. And that's how you get a nice architectural piece if you're looking for that. Kathy and I did a card party years ago mm -hmm. for someone, and we had to do centerpieces for the table. Mm -hmm. And we did, uh, you know, hearts, spades, clubs, diamonds. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> it palms, can, it can be something more than a mirror touch. Yes, it can. Right there. <laughs> they can be quite fun to work with. And they hold that color as long as they're in water. In fact, we did an arrangement with a palmetto frond, uh, a nautilus shell in a glass envelope for the opening of the Anastasia Branch Library. And it lasted, with the change of water, it lasted months. It yes. stayed just like it was. Yes. That palmetto, palmetto did not change. So that's you know that's a good that's a good sturdy thing, easy to find, uh, fun to work with, and reliable. Sometimes uh, we love some things that are, are kind of delicate, but that can be so frustrating if you're trying to keep an arrangement looking good for a period of time. Okay. Okay. So we're Let's put some we're more. we've got the here's the. Holly fern. Maybe that Here's fern. another one of those beautiful croton leaves. Yeah, we could do How do you feel? Fun. Where is the mango? That one is right here. Okay, okay. we're going to okay. try. We love this little gem magnolia because it's a wonderful little shiny green leaf and it has that beautiful brown back. Like velvet. Yes. And easier to work with than a standard magnolia because. Uh, Magno standard magnolia have become trees and then all the pretty foliage is up 30 40 feet whereas a little gem is going to stay smaller and easier to get to and has just as beautiful if not even prettier foliage than the standard magnolia oh that's nice now what you're going to like what we like about this is that there's not an ugly side to a little gem the brown is pretty the green is pretty no, we, I think what we do we is tuck, tuck, a, flower tuck a flower in there. Flower. We're tuck okay. a flower. We're, we're, we're trying to make the back what it looks like. Right. We're trying to make the back look as pretty as the front because if this is your centerpiece on the table, somebody's going to be looking at the back of your arrangement. So let's see if we can get that going. Uh -huh. These are like little mini sunflowers we're tucking in. We got them from uh, B Hill Farm. B Hill Farms in Elkton, Florida. And they have beautiful, beautiful flowers and they make their own honey. And what a wonderful, wonderful um, operation it is. And Jordan Wasagi uh, took us out there and showed us uh, their little zinnias and sunflowers and Celosia and all sorts of wonderful things that we love to use. And here we're getting it not just fresh, but right off the plant. Can't be fresher than that. Okay. All right. So, so looking front good. again. Uh -huh. And we're thinking maybe something like that mm -hmm. to pick up the orange. Right. That's a Gerber daisy that Marilyn's putting in right and now. And Gerbers are big drinkers, so you yeah. do need to keep this watered. Yes. All right. Yes. So there's. Okay. And of course, Kathy and I love putting a fruit or a vegetable mm -hmm. in our presentation. Mm -hmm. So uh, usually we put these things on skewers. Mm -hmm. I could try a skewer or two. This is a really heavy pe uh, pear. Yeah, that's, is that a Bosch pear? Is that what uh, that's called? Oh, I can't really read it. It has a number on it. That's a brown pear. Yeah. It may be Anjou. I'm not sure which one it is. But it's a pretty pear. 
We always choose our fruits and vegetables. So we tucked it in right there, and it makes everything more interesting. There's a little hole right here. We're going to put. We're going to skewer a little clementine. Yep. We're going to put him right in there, and he looks so cute with his little. And we do have a friend that's yeah. going to receive this for Thanksgiving. Yes. So, I mean, basically, she has uh, dinner. Uh huh. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> she has a squash. She has a pear and an yeah. orange. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. She does. She does. And okay. I don't know if that little thing is coming through. Yeah. Now. Let's just see. Let's really push it down in there. It seems to want to come right back out. There we go. All right. Now, I think we How need we just feeling? a little bit. Need a little, little, uh, yeah, a little. When you finish, just keep looking around well, and see what else. Like. <coughs> uh, let's see if we can find. We've got celosia. A nice piece of celosia. This is a great. This magenta color is so much fun. Mm -hmm. We'll put them, tuck that back. And that there. that it comes on a nice little woody stem, which would be good. And we'll pick up a little bit. Perfect. Of that. And Beautiful. Then we think we should put just a little. Little forest, little little bundle of them over here. Okay. And that that way we get some really the brilliant colors of fall just make you love fall in love with flowers. Uh, when it's fall, we always say this is our favorite season. Yeah. We love this best. <laughs> then we go through the winter, and spring comes, and we say, you know, we really love spring the best. It's our best time. <laughs> <It's laughs> <not very fickle, laughs> <laughs> yes, we're fit. But we hope this this will be fun, and this will give everybody a three hundred and sixty pretty view of of, of a, a nice centerpiece that is very organic and uh, very downstairs. Okay. So we're going to put it, I'm going to show you, one thing you might have to remember, you cut the pumpkin and now it's dying. You it's have rotting. food. Essentially you have food. Right. And this is so dangerous because if you don't keep it cool, if you don't keep it dry, it's going to start to rot. So uh, luckily we're just a couple of days from Thanksgiving right now, so Rosie can keep this in her refrigerator or even on her porch, as cold as it is. But one of the most important things is to put it on a plate that is impervious to leakage. Yes. Because if the pumpkin starts to go bad, it creates juices that can ruin your tabletop, it can ruin your granite, it can ruin whatever surface it's on. It will so yeah. we're going to take, we're going to put it on a cake stand because we think everything looks better up. Elevated. So we're yeah. putting that plastic tray on the cake stand. And we'll just put that pumpkin right on there. And uh, probably before we deliver it to her, we'll put some moss around the edges so it's nice and finished. Mm -hmm. But wouldn't that make a beautiful arrangement? Mm -hmm. And then if you want to get it lower, if she wants it lower for her table, all she has to do is just take it off and it gets you know that much lower. It's down 10 mm -hmm. inches. But it makes a great show when it's on the cake stand. It's good on a sideboard or something like that. It's great. Uh, on a kitchen island, mm -hmm. there are many applications. So. Okay, so this is our fall arrangement, mm -hmm. and even though we've, by the time you see this, we will have passed Thanksgiving, we're before Thanksgiving filming it, we want you to have that idea of something that you can do with these colors, these jewel tones that are so beautiful and so much fun to work with. back and this is more of a Christmas application. Uh, this vessel is a Victorian flower arranging uh, vessel so this is something that maybe they would have used in, in downtown times and uh, it's empty and they had of course they didn't have oasis so this was what, what they called a frog, mm -hmm. which was uh, some frogs, if you're a flower ranger, you, your grandmother probably had one with all pins sticking up in it, or my mother had some that were glass with just uh, circular holes uh, in. So this is what they had, and you, they, they would just put that in the top, and then you would start sticking things through the hole down into the water. So uh, we, <laughs> it doesn't, reinterpreted it. It, we, yes, we're reinterpreting it. It doesn't make the best 
There's, there's still a lot of sil silver in there that keeps you from getting plants, uh, pieces, and stems as close as you would like. So we have this piece of uh, plastic, uh, which we put in with Oasis again, which uh, we talked about earlier. And now we started with magnolia leaves, beautiful celosia, the Wicked Witch, right? No, that, is that Wicked that, Witch? That's not Wicked Witch. No, no Wicked Witch has more um, green on the edge, right, so we're right. not sure. Not sure uh, this time we put in two artichokes and... Um, Ligustrum. Ligustrum, mm -hmm. right. So um, anyway, we're off to the races again. Right, right. Okay, so we're going to turn it around. This is kind of... So we don't have the top in there. The we're, front. We're, we're yes. editing the top out. Yes. So the great thing is you can use you the top can, as a decoration. You can uh, lay the top next to it mm -hmm. when you're when you're ready. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I found it though. I just can't get things tight enough right. with this. There's too much silver in between mm -hmm. for what we do today. Okay. All right. All so right. we're going to fill out. Yes. And, and we're hoping to get kind of a, a, an arrangement that swoops down and comes mm -hmm. this way, kind of kind of a diagonal type shape. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've got some beautiful flowers to work with. I think we're gonna set in a hydrangea uh -huh. up in there okay. and maybe some right. white roses. All right. well, out and you know the that hydrangea can be uh, a very temperamental, so you wanna get it as much water as you possibly can. In fact, if you can find a way to kind of get it in the oasis and out of the oasis so that it will actually drink heavily because that's what it likes to do it likes to have plenty of water mm -hmm. and always if you know if your arrangement is going to have to last a couple of days then save a, an extra bract of hydrangea just in water by itself so you can plug it in if you have hydrangea failure because they can do that and then it makes you sad but it's just a reality. Well, it's just, of, it's anytime you hear Hydra, you know it wants water. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Okay. All right. And okay. I think uh, maybe a pink. Do Ooh, we yeah. have a pink to spare? Oh, yeah. We, don't we, have, we have that, that, and we have that. Oh, let's do that. The, the last one, yeah. the more orchid. Uh huh. I think so. Yeah. We got some lovely flowers this yes. morning from uh, Trader Joe's, which is a, a good resource. And this is Wicked Witch. This is the Wicked That's Witch. That's Wicked the, Witch. Yeah. More chartreuse yeah. on the edge. And we're going to tuck it down in the bottom here. So we get a little color going on down there. I'm going to churn in more. Because it likes it also. Another it drinker. Is, another drinker. Because uh, that's one thing. If you've got a woody stem, not so much, you know, it can it can dry out. But if you've got a fibrous, a turgid stem, one that you if you put if you pinched it, it would kind of be watery feeling. Then that means that that plant really likes the water and needs it. Okay, so we're getting that curve coming mm -hmm. down, mm -hmm. liking that. Some so dark and some light. Another one. Yes, but these are almost like little pom poms. Yes, and, um, and these we're also going to go in. Yes, there. Uh -huh. uh, the great thing, uh, Kathy and I are known for doing vegetables and fruit, whatever. Uh, we've got we have two artichokes in there, which are lovely. We could not get kale this morning that wasn't chopped, <laughs> but kale kale is a fabulous strong uh, vegetable, and mm -hmm. it looks great in flower arrangement. So you could you could do this with kale, and it would be wonderful. Yeah, there's one that's called dinosaur kale, and it's a really. I think we green. need a dinosaur to go with us. Yes, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the great thing is that so many vegetables have that beautiful color that you're looking for, and uh, so when you go to the grocery store, don't just look at the flowers; look at the vegetables too, because mm -hmm. they can really add an interesting, uh, you know, depth and and a different texture and. Just a little bit of an aha moment that there's an actual vegetable in there. We are coming right we, fought, we complained last week. We did a, a wonderful show at Amelia Island. A bunch of ladies from Shout the garden. Shout out. Yes. Oh, wonderful ladies in their garden club and their women's club. And um, 
we said at the time we had not seen a spray rose. And lo and behold, today we found spray roses. So, you know, hopefully. Again, thank you, Trina. That's right. Because a spray rose is the Energizer Bunny of roses. I mean, yes. it's just. It will, you get so much all mileage. All roses are pretty, um, pretty tough and they can stand up. But the, that spray rose just does so well and usually hangs on so well. Okay, do we want to work these in there? I do we, like them. Yeah, I like I the do. blackberry. I'm not uh, sure. This is India Maybe. Hawthorn berry, and it starts out green and goes red, and now it's black, and it really is a pretty little berry. And it gives a little flower in the mm -hmm. spring. Yes, it does. It has, it's a great plant to grow. Yes, absolutely. It, it, great plant. In Florida, Florida especially. Yes. Okay. Where, how's the like word? it there? I think I like it right there. Yeah. Okay, let's try it. Hopefully, we can get it up a little bit so it can nest in there. I do not want to break the neck. I will hold this down for you. You can. So I'm trying to find the oasis Ooh, to go into. There it is, right there, right under the nose is where it is. Okay, let's let's, let's bring it move it, forward. move it that way. Uh -huh. Yeah, move it that way. Okay, now we'll get something underneath it. Okay, okay. I think. <laughs> Do we want? Do we want to bring Can this? Pose? Show you. This is where we added the berries, right mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And then we do have to do some work on the back, but um, we need to finish this just a little. Oh, that's too high off the ground. I don't. I don't think so. I don't. Maybe right in the ground. Right there. Yeah. Okay. So I think we can do that. These come down, but I think that where we need something is like right there. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Uh, how do we get the artichokes in? The artichokes are on skewers. Just break a wooden skewer. Or by, by the smaller size. Oh, whatever. that's pretty. There you go. Yeah. Okay, now. That's Lysianthus. See, just a few minutes, mm -hmm. and you've got something really pretty. Okay, now what do we want to do? We're going to do that, yes. Yeah. And while I'm thinking about it, earlier when we looked at this, if it wasn't quite as full right there in the middle, and you wanted it, to have a candle, this can have a candle right down through it. Wouldn't that be pretty? Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Let's look so at the back. We do a little back. Yeah. Uh, uh, we, yeah you right can here. always uh, some magnolias. What else? Oh, that that would do it. Okay. Do we need that? No, I don't think we do. Okay. But I, uh, what I want is I want the lower ones because I want okay. the deeper ones. Deep. And we always have Deep. more coleus in the back. Yeah. Maybe I should put coleus over in here. Oh yeah, you How do that. that. You do that so Yeah, a little side. bouquet of coleus could could be lovely back here. This is so nice, nice. and it goes right into the water. The other thing, if you have a big drinker like a hydrangea and you're worried about it lasting. Don't put it into the oasis. Put it into the water that's around the oasis, and it'll it'll uh, take up more water. Right. Okay. I need to get something in the middle of that. I think. Okay. I think we need a flower or a texture. Maybe some white. Maybe. There are white roses down in here. Small. Yeah, small. Yeah, which I good. think is the pro. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't have a lot of space there. Okay. So we're trying to make sure that it's, it's as pretty on the back side yes. as it is on the front. If it is in a place where you're going to look at it, 360. Also in front of a mirror. We always tell people to put, put things in front of the mirror. Then you have two. Mm -hmm. So you get double duty for mm -hmm. it. Okay. okay, so that's the back with the addition of coleus and uh, another rose. Mm -hmm. So we think... You know, uh, when you think of holidays, Christmas and New Year's and uh, all the different holidays that are celebrated, um, sometimes you think red and green. But the truth is not everybody's house likes red and green. I mean, you yeah. know, sometimes you have shades. So we think anything in that red family, you know, to purple, to lighter pink, mm -hmm. with white and green, is, you know, really beautiful at, at the holidays. So we think this would be a gorgeous arrangement. Uh, as Marilyn said, you could have it on your table with a candle. You could put it on your sideboard um, with a mirror behind it so you get the pretty back as well as the front. But this is using a lovely old 
upstairs piece yes. uh, to, you know, to get a beautiful arrangement. And, you know, it, this is Downton Light, but it's, it's on a budget because most of the components here, either you grew the coleus and the, uh, the magnolia, or you, purchase, you can purchase all these flowers at a grocery store, which is, you know, great because not all of us are connected to florists. Uh, while we're on this, uh, we want to talk about something we neglected to mention last time. We're going to, we do companion pieces, and for this particular arrangement, we've done a companion piece with something called an apron or a adapter. An adapter. And we're going to show you one of those in a minute. But this is kind of the companion piece for the uh, arrangement, and it goes on top of a candlestick. I'll put the candlestick right there and Marilyn's got it in her hand mm -hmm. and you know it can still have a candle in it if you wanted it to but it could be just a little arrangement on top of a candlestick and if you wanted something a little bit airier you had a smaller table you didn't have room for all of this or you wanted this on your sideboard this could be on your main table on top of the candlestick we'll put that right uh -huh. on there essentially it's a plastic saucer mm -hmm. dark green with a little cage built in the center for your oasis. Mm -hmm. The saucer uh, maintains the water, the little reservoir for you. And um, you can just pop it right in a candlestick. Mm -hmm. so and you then can see you can, if you didn't want one uh, rose there or something, you can put your candle right down through mm -hmm. into the wet oasis. It'll be great. Mm -hmm. And... At the same time, we didn't do it earlier, but we're going to well, do we'll it show now. you the fall. We're going to show you the fall because mm -hmm. we still have our lovely pumpkin here. So here's that adapter with less stuff in it. It's plastic, and it has it has like she said a little cage that has a piece of oasis. We've already got the candle in it. So let us finish this off. We started with some croton and some chevalera and some hydrangea. So let's see if we can't make it match this one right here. Mm -hmm. So we get some other pieces in there. Do you want one, one tiny like that? Oh, that's great. That's great. These are little mini um, sunflowers. Or and like, maybe some cassia pieces. Oh, yes. And you can grow cassia. In fact, if this you're is in Florida or oh. wherever in the South, this is a this is the time of tree. Time of year for cassia. This is when beautiful. it shows off. I it mean, is really so shows gorgeous. Off. The buds mm -hmm. are beautiful. Mm -hmm. Aren't this these buds pretty? They are. This is this is the time for a lot of really brilliantly colored flowers to be blooming. Uh, this is the end of the year for the flower world. So flowers are seeking to attract uh, pollinators. They're seeking to, to continue to live. And in order for a flower to continue to live, it has to reproduce. And if you don't have pollinators, that doesn't happen. Is, um, would it take a little Oh, go yeah, there. I think that could tuck in okay. right up beside Let me the get candle. You a skin. Yeah. Let right. me have another little piece of cassia. Let me get one more piece of the cassia. Okay. And the cassia, the great thing about the cassia, it's on a little stem, once again, that kind of makes it easy to push it into the oasis. So uh, that's also another reason to, to like it and to use it. And we're getting that yellow and we got red around the edge and the orange at the top and we're going to top it with a little orange, a little uh, clementine. And yeah, that tucked right in there. That's what, whoops, hello. You have to remember you change your, it too your balance. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, our candles are not exactly loving these adapters, um, uh, this candlestick. But we tried it in another candlestick and it was wonderful. So uh, anyway, let me turn this around without flipping it off the table. Yeah, if that's a way, if there's a way to do that. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. And you can see that this marries to it. that. I love it. it relates to that. And you know, we probably would, if we were really doing this for uh, a finished product, we'd probably tuck some more little pieces in there. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to let go of it. I don't want to disturb its balance right this minute. Also, we've taken Marilyn's beautiful 
um, lantern, lantern. Mm -hmm. and interpreted it with a fall setting. It's got a little pumpkin in it. It's got a little pine cone, some leaves from croton, some berries from gold. So, right. Uh -huh. So it relates to these pieces. And we're going to turn it around here and we're going to make it into a Christmas piece. Put it right before your eyes. We're going to try to move that guy without. I think that over. one's all right. It's the yeah. clementine. Yeah. On that clementine one. is really heavy, a heavy fruit, and it's kind of declaring itself. So we're going to turn this little lantern around here and we're going to reinterpret it. Right now it has a fall look to it, and that's great fun. We're going to, we're going to make it go. A lantern is a great piece. Mm -hmm. You can have so much fun with that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And easy to work with. Okay, we can move that. Even though we've got moss in there, okay. I don't think we'll do that. All right. We're going to take three little bud vases. Let me put them in right. the And let's see here we're going to. And we're just going to chuck them back. Uh -huh. Just the back guy. And we hope we aren't too tall. We're just about to well, our little bed makes it just a little Is it going to the back? That's yeah, that would be good. Okay. Uh -huh. And this guy. It'd be great if these were, they, they're, uh, we've got Ming fern in the water, so you don't see all the mechanics. The fern covers up the mechanics of the flower stems. And we're going to tuck a few little, we'll, we'll bring some color down to the bottom. We could put that one little pine cone back in there because we're talking sure. we're talking winter. We could, we could and you could also, if you want leaves behind it, you could put a magnolia. Mm -hmm. Would be beautiful well, behind let's it. Let's a flower in there. Something that's that's pretty. Uh, uh, you could put a rose. Mm -hmm. That's true. Or that, like this pink one, I think, is real showy. Okay, let's do that. It opens up more. Okay. okay. And, um, you could use, uh, we love any kind of eucalyptus, but the seeded eucalyptus is absolutely fabulous mm -hmm. uh, in winter. Gorgeous. Yeah. Okay, great. This is seeded eucalyptus. Mm -hmm. In and fact, let's, let's we can put a turn it around. Let's put a sprig at the top. Uh -huh. and give it a little top knot. So now the lantern get this reflects out. this arrangement. So we we've we've, we've got the little little frilly candlestick arrangement. You've got your major arrangement, and then you've got another piece. And it's nice for them to have. They don't have to match, but they have the same colorway. They have some of the same textures. They still share some of the same flowers. And uh, this is how we design a house when we do the tour of homes, which we hope next year we'll be back online. St. Augustine the, the, tour of homes. The Christmas tour of homes for the Garden Club of St. Augustine. And we hope next year we'll be live and in person again. And we'll be showing off, you know, five to six of the wonderful old houses of St. Augustine. And we'll have some fun decorating them. So have some fun in the fall, in the winter, and enjoy yourself. Bring those vegetables out, and we'll see you in the spring shortly.